Right now, though, we're going to join Dr. Sarah for the uh, latest health news and uh, and all the breaking news on coronavirus uh, this morning. Morning, Sarah. Morning, Sarah. Morning. Um, so shocking numbers, and we've been told every afternoon to expect the uh, the death toll to uh, to to continue to rise. Sixteen thousand and sixty up to yesterday. Daily rise of five hundred and ninety six. That's the lowest, though. Thankfully, for a fortnight. But the Department of Health has named 43 staff who've died from coronavirus. Um, the, the number is believed to be uh, possibly more than double that. Um, and so the conversation revolves around PPE again. Um, there's a flight waiting at Bryce Norton to go to Turkey. I thought it had already set off, but it was still waiting to go to Turkey to bring a whole load of stuff back. I think we've got um, a PPE arriving from China, although allegedly we sent them a whole load at the beginning of the crisis in the first place. Um, what do you need? What are you short of? What have your colleagues said? So it does depend on where you are as to what PPE you need. So different healthcare settings require different types of PPE. For example, GPs, only need the surgical masks, uh, aprons, gloves. Whereas if you're doing aerosol generating procedures, so things like intubating, extubating, you need gowns, you need the, the full masks, um, you need the, the visors. So it does differ, but currently our main issue is with regards to the gowns, uh, where Public Health England have now said, yes, there is a shortage of gowns. They may have to, uh, if you do run out, you may have to either reuse the gowns or wear an apron instead. Now, that does go against a lot of our uh, infection control type of training. So I, I understand why a lot of people on the front line are feeling quite hard done by, by, that, by that statement. Um, Sarah, another story now. Doctors have backed calls for the public to wear homemade masks when they leave the homes. Right at the beginning of this, we were all talking about masks and how effective they were, and we all sort of believed that they didn't really do an awful lot. We had a top virologist on here who said, absolutely pointless, pointless. Might, ha might help you giving it to someone, but yeah. it wouldn't stop you receiving it because yeah. the virus was so tiny. So uh, why the change? Well, it hasn't necessarily changed. So we do have evidence to show that masks, um, the medical grade masks, can help people in healthcare settings. But there's very little evidence to provide that in the general public, it will necessarily help. And also the worry about the general public going out and buying all of these medical grade masks would be that then we deplete the, the supply chain for those that really need it in the front line. But this is where the concept of pot potentially wearing a homemade mask has come from. So the homemade masks are often made out of cotton, which is a very uh, not, not a dense type of material. So lots can go in. But there is the concept that if you are unwell, you're coughing or you're sneezing or you're speaking, that those aerosol droplets may be caught. So yes, it will protect other people from getting it from you, potentially, plausibly but it won't necessarily protect you from getting it from others. Okay. Um, scientists are going to investigate whether vitamin D can help coronavirus patients fight the disease. It's something that we were ahead of the game on last week with Dr Chris. Let's have a look at what he said. Vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin, that's actually made uh, in your skin under the action of sunshine. So we're all low on vitamin D and we should be taking vitamin D. I want to read a conclusion of one paper regarding vitamin D. Um, you know, vitamin D deficiency is common. We recommend that those at risk of coronavirus, that is all of us, right, be urgently supplemented with vitamin D to enhance their resistance to COVID-19 um, Dr. Chris is also saying then that, uh, that beans were a great source of fibre, that you yeah. should have yoghurt every day to help your digestive system, which would then boost your immune system. Um, is it plausible, um, the vitamin D? Is, there, is that something to look at or are we just grasping at straws? No, absolutely. So we know that uh, vitamin D is uh, part of our immune response. It's not just about our bones and skeleton anymore. And we also know from previous studies that it can reduce the number of asthma flare-ups, which are often caused by respiratory infections, and it can reduce the number of acute respiratory tract infections that you get. And obviously, COVID-19 is a respiratory tract infection. And so there is certainly evidence to suggest that this might be something that we can do that's very simple um, to help ourselves. 
Well, thank you very much, Thanks, Sarah. Sarah. Thank you.